Welcome back to the Wizard Shop and more dealership woes. Let's take a look at what this car has been through and it's still not fixed. Let's take a look. Hi, Wizard. We have a video to shoot. What are you eating? Video Bob. What? Video Bob. That's gross. Yeah, look. I guess you are. Yes. He sent this to me in the mail, and it's very tasty. It tastes like watermelon. Being friends with Video Bob has its benefits. Let me show you guys. A signed poster from Vinnie Paul with Vinnie's signature on it. How cool is that, guys? So this is a 2015 Buick Encore with the 1.4 turbo. The customers had issues with the charging light being on and off. It's had some issues with overheating going on. It had a check engine light on. It's been to the dealership multiple, multiple times. And the lady that owns this has just had enough. This one was a check engine light on. They did an oil change and said that would fix it. Here's another one where they did a serpentine belt and an oil change. And they said that would fix her battery light and her check engine light and she'd be good to go. $277. Another oil change, they're saying that that will fix the, the uh, check engine light. And they did a few other services, $364. It's still not fixed. This one's just a receipt for, I think, a tow bill or something, I'm not sure. But all those papers, multiple trips to the dealership. I'm starting to see what you guys are talking about because Obviously, I don't take my car to the shop. I have a shop. I fix it myself or have my guys do it. But I'm slowly starting to see what you guys go through. You take it to the dealership that's supposed to have the top technicians. One trip, two trip, three trips. It's still not fixed. What we found, what was wrong with this car, and has fixed it, after we got it done, me and Cameron, or we call him Long Beach, is my, one of my new employees. We just looked at each other. We're just like, how did this not get fixed after three trips at a dealership? It doesn't make any sense. Let me put these papers away, and then we'll take a look at the car. These are kind of cute, Mrs. Wizard. Uh, if you say so. They're kind of small and little 1.4 turbo. If you don't want to get on the highway very quickly, sure. I think they have okay power. It's a small, really, really small SUV. But we'll go ahead and take a look around it. As you can see, it's got some bird bombs on it. We have a dent right here. We've got a picture of that already. And you guys know in the automotive world when you're running a shop, you always get pictures of this stuff when the car first shows up because the customer may not even know that's there. And they get home and you get a nasty phone call. What did you do to my car? But these, this came in with all these dents on it. There's a few more. As we go down this side here, everything's pretty good. There's a small dent here. I'm not knocking this person for the dents. I understand it. It's life. It happens. I'm just showing you guys that we take pictures for our own safety. There's nothing wrong with the car. Around the back, we can see Buick Encore. It's kind of got some nice tail lights. Kind of a nice rear end for a Buick. Everything looks good on this side. There is a little scratch here. We got a picture of that as well. Everything looks pretty good on it. We'll go ahead and open the hood. So there's our little 1.4 liter turbocharged Ecotec. No, it is not a powerhouse, but for its size, it's not too bad. It's a little 1.4 liter, but it's putting out power almost of a Toyota 2.4 or something like that, naturally aspirated. It's got a roughly 140 horsepower and 150 pound-feet of torque. Now, compared to some C63 AMG or something crazy, this is a joke. But that's not the point of this car. This car is not meant for that. It's meant for economy and to get you from point A to point B comfortably. And it does that very well. There's the turbo down there. You can see there's the wastegate actuator. Really simple to get to. If the turbo were to go out, you would be able to just 
unbolt it and take it off right there. One thing I do like about the smaller engines, they take up less space, which gives you more room to work on everything. Do you remember the days, Mrs. Wizard of Grand Prix, where you had to unbolt the motor mounts to do spark plugs? Oh yeah, just rock that engine forward just to get some ones in back. Listen to that, guys. No muffler Newton. How about that? So here's our map sensor. Here's a purge valve. Here's our fuel rail. Everything's just right there, easy to get to. Real nice. So the first thing we did is we connected our scan tool. It's an Autel MS908 that we use. And we found one code. And the code was for faulty thermostat. We did check it, it wasn't getting up to operating temperature, and occasionally it would overheat. It was just kind of failing at different points. That's all it was. And I just mentioned a minute ago, Long Beach is Cameron. Let's go ahead and bring him in. <laughs> all right, Cameron. So you've been here a few months. Yes, sir. And you came from where in California exactly? Long Beach. Long Beach. Did you actually live in, is it the city of Long Beach? Yep, I was on Cherry Avenue next to the airport. Next to the airport. Mm -hmm. Very cool. He decided he wanted to work here at Omega. He packed up his things and headed out. I read through his resume, looked at everything, and it's like, this guy sounds really good. And so far, he's been really good. Very, very pleased with your work. So he actually replaced a thermostat on this, and I'll show it to you guys. You can see that it's electrically controlled, kind of like a Land Rover. I had him replace that, went and road tested it, and no check engine light after that, right? No, sir. And the temperature stays right in the middle. We even watch it with the scan tool. No more overheat, no more overcooling. It's exactly where it's supposed to be. Isn't it crazy that a dealership couldn't find this? Multiple times. Anyways, you can go throw that in the trash, and thanks for being in the video. Thank you. So the thermostat wasn't some mysterious, magical, elusive thing that needed to be fixed. The computer was screaming, here's the code, it's the thermostat, please look at it. And by the time we replaced it and everything, it's a few hundred bucks, it's not very expensive at all. With the parts and the labor, the thermostat actually was kind of expensive. I was expecting 10 or 20 bucks, it was way more than that. This could have become an issue if they kept driving it and it really were to overheat really strongly and the customer kept driving it, it could have damaged the engine and like I just mentioned a minute ago, me and Cameron just scratched our heads. We're like, so we replaced that and it fixed it. What was so hard about that? We didn't even use a $10,000 dealership scan tool. We, we used our Autel MS-908 and common sense. And all that stack of papers laying there in the seat of visits to the dealership. And that's all it was. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm, like I said, I'm starting to see what you guys go through. This is really crazy. Is that what we're coming to in America with mechanic sh shops? It's really sad. The last thing we needed to check was the battery light was on. Cameron noted that while it was running, it was putting out 14 volts. But if you turn it off and try to start it again, it would just go click, nothing, dead. So I told him, go ahead and get our battery charger, hook it up, and see if we just needs to be charged or something like that. We have a smart charger, and as soon as he hooked it up, it came up on the screen and said, faulty battery. I was like, boom, there you go. It won't even take a charge, and our charger says, hell no, I don't even want to charge that battery. So charging it's not the solution. A new battery was the solution. We got a brand new battery in it. It puts out 14 volts. We let it run for a while, turned it off, monitor the voltage, it stays around 12, 12 and a half, and start try it up the next time. All it needed was a battery. It didn't need a serpentine belt. It didn't need, I don't know what else they did on there. Just a battery. So we got a battery and a thermostat. And we're done. And this car's fixed. There are no warning lights. It drives perfect. The temperature's perfect. The charging system's great. I don't, I don't get it, guys. You didn't need a lift to fix this. You didn't need a Tech 2 or 
or expensive scan tool at the dealership. You could have fixed this in your driveway. You guys watching this could have fixed this yourself. A lot of you are gearheads. You could have figured this out. After this was all said and done, and I know it was confirmed fix, I actually went and sat in my office for a minute and just stared at the wall. I was just like, what just happened here? I don't understand. Trained technicians. Uh, and all this money that she spent. But I know now it is fixed. She'll get her car back. She will pay the bill. And she will have gotten what she paid for. A fixed car. I know and she knows the next time that it does come back to the shop, it won't be a thermostat problem or a battery. It won't be overheating or a charging system problem. That's been solved. She knows that, I know that, so we're all happy. That's the way I like to do business. The customer's happy, I'm happy, I got money, they got a fixed car. It's an equal mutual agreement. What I'm starting to see, guys, is dealerships are starting to really bilk people really hard. Instead of having a repeat customer over the next five years, they say, let's get two or three shots out of this customer and let's hammer it home. Instead of 200 bucks, two grand, three grand. We know they're never gonna come back again, but we got nine grand out of this customer. And now it doesn't matter if they come back, we'll get the next guy that comes in the door, next guy or girl. So that is a really poor business model. Those people don't love cars like we do. They just love getting money, and however it comes or however they get the money, it doesn't matter. That's too bad. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the lift and at least take a look underneath of it. Before it leaves, let's go ahead and give it our full inspection. So we'll go ahead and take a look underneath there is a little bit of wet from where we did the thermostat. We'll wash that off with, with our garden hose before it goes. Just a little bit here or there. It's really not that bad. But I can see that there is some seepage going on from a valve cover or something like that. Really not that bad. It's not dripping. And we'll go ahead and check these wheels. The brakes are about half gone, maybe 60% gone, but they're still good. Nice and tight. The CV shafts are good. Serpentine belt looks brand new because the dealership just put one on. Struts look good. Sway bar links are good. Brakes are 60%. CV shaft good. Struts are dry. And this sway bar link is good. Move our way back here. Got simple exhaust. This is the cat. No, it doesn't meow. It's not like the cat that's on our yacht, Mrs. Wizard. Oh, I like that one a little more than that one. Yeah. Here's our resonator. Not really much to see under these vehicles, just a floor. <laughs> Here's our fuel tank and our EVAP canister. You definitely want to inspect these when you're doing an inspection. They could have hit some road debris and this could be cracked right through here. That will cause a check engine light. Here we have a solid beam rear end, kind of like a minivan. It's not independent rear suspension, but this is not a $200,000 car either. Brakes are about 60% there. Nothing loose. The shock is good and dry. Brakes are good, shock's good. Don't have to worry about a sway bar link. There's no sway bar on a beam suspension. It's not going to sway. Everything's good there. And then here's our muffler. And one single exit exhaust. Tires look good. They have a date code of the 51st week of 2020. So they're good. They are very good up-to-date tires. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. I don't really see a whole lot to speak of. So although I'm glad that we could get this fixed for this customer, I'm sad that so much money has been lost for nothing. That's really too bad. And if that is the case, if that's what we're going to look forward to in the future of the years going forward with getting cars fixed, it doesn't look very good. 
It kind of saddens me. I won't be able to do this for the next 150 years, obviously, so I hope that mechanic shops as a whole don't go down the toilet. It, it really is not going to be fun. But before this thing left the shop, I definitely want to do a video to show you guys some of the stuff that comes in here and some of the hair pulling incidents that we see. It's like, what the heck is going on here? So if you're curious what kind of tools we use to fix this little 1.4 liter, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we got sweet videos to come. Thanks for watching.